call to order the uh, rigor meeting of the Batavia City Council for Tuesday, January 21st, 2014. I'd ask that we all rise for a brief invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, as the uh, City Council meets in regular session, our hearts are heavy. Our city family has experienced some losses. Uh, specifically, we want to ask for a special blessing to be showered upon the family of Alderman Sam on the loss of her tragic loss of her sister in Arizona this past week. Uh, we ask that a special blessing be showered on their understanding and their grieving, knowing that uh, great and good things will come from her memories and her example, and that we just ask that the family be comforted and aided in their hours of grief. Also tonight, we are heavy-hearted over the loss of our longtime city employee, Alan Richardson, who served for many years at the Batavia Sanitary Sewage Treatment Plant. Alan's family uh, includes two sons, uh, who uh, Byron and Gary, who both are longtime city employees, and we just ask that uh, sympathy and blessings be showered upon each and every one of their members of their family as they deal with his passing. Tonight, as always, we ask for guidance and understanding as we react and act on the our, our items of business before us. And as always, we want to ask for a special blessing tonight upon those from our community and from throughout the United States of America who are serving so ably in defense of the liberties of our country on foreign soil. Uh, tonight, we just ask for guidance and understanding, knowing that uh, all, each and every one of the members of the City Council are here tonight to do the very best that they can for the future of our communities. We ask for all these blessings. Amen. Tonight, I'd like to ask, we have some scouts from Troop uh, 103 in the audience, and I'd ask that they would come forward and lead the city council and the audience in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you guys. I'd ask the city clerk to please call the roll. Brown? Here. Clark? Here. Atac? Here. Stark? Here. Chanzit? Here. Wolf? Here. Sparks? Here. O'Brien? Here. Callahan? Here. Homan? Here. Sam? Here. Vasilian? Here. Sarone? Here. McFadden? Here. Let the record reflect that all 14 elected members of the city council are present and accounted for this evening's meeting, so we have the necessary quorum to conduct business. Moving then to item number four, items to be removed, added, or changed on tonight's agenda. Alderman Sparks, as Chairman of Governmental Services, would you present this, please? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, tonight we are removing item 16, the executive session, and item 17, resolution 14-11-R, to prove the legal representation agreement. Um, with those removed, I make a motion we accept the agenda as amended. So moved. Moved by Alderman second. Sparks, second by Alderman Atec for the approval of the agenda is so amended. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Sparks? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Sam? Aye. Vasilian? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atec? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Motion for the approval of the agenda is approved 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Moving then to item number five, which is presentation and approval of tonight's consent agenda. Alderman Sparks, as chairman of Governmental Services Committee, would you present this, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Consent agenda is as follows. To accept and place on file the joint committee of the whole minutes for November 19th, December 10th, December 17th, 2013, and January 7th, 2014. Be the December 2013 building report See the Historic Preservation Commission minutes for December 16, 2013. Approvals D, January 3, 2014, payroll in the amount of $770,021.87. The January 17, 2014, payroll in the amount of $802,609.91. E, the accounts payable check register, the amount of $3,331,534.23. F, the City Council Minutes for December 16th, 2013. G, Resolution 14-6-R, 
safe routes to school authorizing execution of easement agreement and grant of easement for PIN number 12263060008 located west of Hart Road at Batavia Creek H resolution 14-9-R authorizing task order number two with Avant Energy Inc. for NERC compliance issues for the 2014 in the amount not to exceed $35,000. I resolution 14-10-R approving lease agreement with new singular wireless for installation of antennas and building construction at Westside Water Tower. J approve the Class F liquor license for the Batavia Artists Association slash Water Street Studios 2014 gallery opening and waive the license fee. K approve the Class F liquor license for Batavia Chamber of Commerce 2014 annual Citizen of the Year award and waive license fee. I move we accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Moved by Alderman Spark, second by Alderman Stark for the approval of the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion? Clerk, call the roll, please. Sparks? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Sam? Aye. Basilian? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atak? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Consent agenda is approved uh, 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Okay, now we're going to have a very special moment in the history of the Batavia City Council. Uh, <laughs> We don't get to do this once in about 100 years, but uh, tonight uh, we are very honored tonight to have with us the 2013 Batavia High School varsity football team, who as all of us know is proudly now the uh, 6A class state champions in the state of Illinois. And they have brought great honor and distinction upon our community and something that uh, I think is long gonna be remembered in the, in the history annals of Batavia and in the minds and memories of all their dedicated fans. Uh, I've had a couple of opportunities in the last few weeks to con have conversations with Coach Perron on various aspects of all this great news. And one of the things I told him is, as most of you know, I have been very instrumental in uh, working on for a long time with John Gustafson first and later with Marilyn Robinson on the updating of the Batavia History Book. And certainly this particular moment in Batavia History is one that when the next edition of the History Book is published, is going to be one that we really want to uh, highlight with some degree of fanfare. Uh, one picture I told Coach Perron I definitely want to have is the picture of the team standing out in DeKalb with all those thousands of Batavia fans and the West Bleachers of the uh, DeKalb Stadium there because uh, I have a feeling that perhaps was the most uh, memorable assembly of fans at a high school football game maybe in the history of the state of Illinois and that's something that I'm sure we'll long live on in the legacies of Batavia and will be a memory and a, a moment of pride and, and remembrance that future generations will hear about. And uh, I, interestingly, just for the grins of it, I went back into the 1912 uh, Batavia Heralds and read the report of the, when the high school, foot, uh, high school, not the football, but the basketball team won the state championship in that year. And uh, according to what I could read, the, the number of fans in attendance, and it was downstate where this took place, the number of fans in attendance at the state championship game in 1912 was about 10, as near as I could tell. <laughs> now, obviously, the, the transportation facilities weren't as great as they are today, uh, but uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, those are kind of the, the nice you know, memorable moments in Batavia's history. And certainly this past fall was one of the really super deluxe, one, deluxe ones that we've had. And so tonight, uh, I'm gonna do a couple of things. If you wanna just bear with me till I get out front. They like that. They like it. One of the things the, the coach asked me for was a, a copy of the sign that we are starting to put up at the city limits of Batavia. Uh, I asked the uh, speech department, I wanted the first signs we put up to be put up on the north end of town so that they'd be in the face of Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the coach asked for one for the high school. 
school so that we could, uh, you're going to put this someplace out near the stadium, yeah, right, in, yes, in the will, stadium. Yeah. Sure will. And so this will be a sign mm -hmm. that uh, the city of Batavia probably hands over to the Batavia Varsity football program for some really outstanding community history and memories and the pride and the joy that you brought to this community for the event that you, you succeeded in accomplishing. So, Coach, on behalf of the team of citizens, I'll give you that sign. Thank you. Thank you. but we have a, a very nice certificate that we're going to give a copy to each of the, of the players uh, with their name on it and it's signed by myself and includes the names of all the members of the city council and we've got some photos on it of some of the things that happened at the championship game. It's got the city seal and it says the 2013 IHSA 6A boys football champion. <laughs> And uh, I can tell you that I'm sure many of you will probably probably have this on your walls or your future houses or your bedrooms and your your uh, college dorms or wherever you're going. So uh, I'll just tell you one secret. We did this back in uh, 2006 when we got to second place in the state championship under Coach Casperi, and it was well received. And ironically, we had a couple of the guys who got the certificates. One of them had a fire in his house, and the certificate got burned up. Another one, there was an accident, and the certificate got lost. So I just want to tell you, the city, we do keep these on, we do keep the on file copies of the certificate. So in the future, if something happens to your original one, just call us, and we can probably replicate it for it. Okay? So I'll just share that with you so that it is. I'd like to ask uh, Alderman Wolf if he'd come forward, because he's the, been the voice of the Bulldogs this time. The season on TV, and he knows how to pronounce everybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, he's the name. Well, if those are here. We're going to give those to Coach Pierron, and he's going to distribute them. I think they're in um, numerical order, so it'll be in roster number order as you can call out. Okay. okay. I'll just take a look at that. Yeah, okay. So it'll be in roster order, so if you're on here, you'll just hand them to me, and you guys will come on up and get your. Uh, all right, we'll start off with Josh Lanehard. <laughs> James Millette. <laughs> Ethan Compton. <laughs> Kevin Murphy. <laughs> Jake Lava. Yeah. Rourke, Rourke Mullins. Peyton Pierron. Oh, yeah. Eddie Golden. Anthony Monaghini. <laughs> Danny Aharoni. <laughs> Tucker Knox. <laughs> Evan Acosta. Alexander Rodriguez. <coughs> Mitchell Davis. Micah Coffey. <laughs> Ethan Gates, Zach Garrett, Luke Beckman. Jonathan Schubert. Schubert. 
Kyle Nemec. Kanan Coffee. Nick Burnaby. Anthony Thelk. Michael Moffat. Brandon Dean. Jason Cahill. Yeah. Forrest Gilbertson. Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> Brett Bowman, Anthony Scacia, Willie Perth, little kid here. What a tough kid. Blake Crowder. Sergio Espana. <laughs> David Sharp. <coughs> Dylan Ingersoll. Jake Burkhog. Joe Gross, Ooh. Patrick Ward, Keaton Drees, Andrew Clark. Matt Fabian. David Lanciotti. Being a deacon and all, you kind of got that Louis Farrakhan thing going with the bow tie. <laughs> Eric Wallerstein. Kevin Green. Dean Simon Sully. Thank you. Noah Frazier. Dan Munson. Donovan Kilker. Stephen Hansen. Johnny Robinson. Good job. Angelo Magana. Nick Ophut. Aaron Glasgow. Sean Callahan. Brandon Haynes. Jack Schroeder. Colin Thurston. Matt Pahorsky.
Jacob Halters. Yes. Justin Halters. <laughs> Must be up in the numbers now. Got to line that. John Puches. Jacob Slot. Nick Thomas. Connor McKeon. Mitch Cruz. Isaac Cortez. Zach Tate. Patrick Gamble. Nick Silvati. Looks like a big pepper kind. Matt Smith. At least the guy Giovanni the Garcia. Box. Anthony Tuzzolino. Connor Croce. Brandon Parker. Zach Sims, Chris Astra, Noah Cotton, Eric Schneider. Jack for shears. Like that close to it. Like that close to the top. Anthony Papala. <laughs> Max Hygen. Stoke, Howie Morgano, Nick Stuttle, Micah Clemens. Alec Berry, Jordan Zwart, Clayton Simpson, Brandon Nutley, Eric Kuzinga. <laughs> Luke Garrity, Comantes Thomas, <laughs> Ryan Minetti, <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> Zach Majka. <laughs> John Wall. You were so excited. Nate Kearney. That's funny. Matt Zimmerman.
Dan Rubio. <laughs> Mark Basler. I would have. You're just a little off your game. That's okay. <laughs> Sean Conklin, Tyler Hall, and Stefan Cortez. Okay. Dave Andrews, athletic director. <laughs> Mike Gasperi. <laughs> Matt Holm. <laughs> Billy Colomateo. PJ <laughs> White. <laughs> and Kadena. <laughs> ben Hankus. <laughs> Kevin Jensen. Larry Gay. Adam Kowalski. <laughs> Okay. Derek Whitwell, Kyle Plate, Steve Bailey, <laughs> Alex Becker, <laughs> Brian Farwell, Dennis Sims. <laughs> Ryan Sullivan. <laughs> yes, Calvin Cole. No. <laughs> John Ramsey. Last, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say to the team again, you're the pride and joy of Batavia, and I really can't say enough for what you've done. Uh, you really have made Batavia shine, and it's a badge of honor that I hope each and every one of you will wear very proudly the rest of your lives. And so you really made a moment not only for yourselves, but for our town. And it really is a shining moment. So thank you on behalf of the citizens of Batavia for doing something that was really very, very special in the history of our town. So thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, thank, you know, one of the big moments uh, coming back from the game, especially in the playoffs, was uh, the police and fire escort that we would get. And I know one of our members of our team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack, Jack, would you please stand up? Jack is about water trucks, and uh, he needed to be on our bus with water trucks for leading us into town. But the trouble that you go through makes it feel like the small town stuff. And so we think that's very special from the street party. Uh, something that was you know, happened years ago, the water tower with the bulldog on it that looks over our field, and you know, all the extra uh, things that our community puts into the team. I know that the guys all appreciate it and uh, really uh, all adds to the uh, unique specialness that is our town that's retained. And so, again, thank you to all of you for all the things that you do uh, for our city and the support that we have from our city and our city services. Thanks so, to you and all the coaches for a great job. Thank, thank you. Now go home and do your homework. Thank you. Thank you very much.
No. Most of them are that way. That was good. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving to item number seven on our agenda, which are matters from the public for items not on our agenda. Do we have anybody this evening? Okay, moving then to item number eight, which is a presentation by Batavia Main Street. Mr. Hageman, Joy. Kurt, we'll start the minute and then I will get some other stuff rolling. I only trust Joy with all the technical stuff here. So, um, <clears throat> so quickly, I'll go through the uh, Main Street Minute and uh, things that happened over the over the past month and what, can, what we're looking forward to coming up here. Uh, over the last month, we had uh, 67 separate volunteers who donated 139 hours of their planning, meeting, and programs in December. Um, we have uh, three new businesses that we are looking to coming into downtown here, which is the Hummingbird in a Shoebox Children's Clothing Boutique, uh, Gaetano's, who I believe was here earlier, um, and the Past and Present Shops, too, which is a consignment and antiques shop. Um, some of the things that uh, we want to highlight coming up here, uh, we do have a new board member uh, joining us uh, as of our, first, our next board meeting here, which is coming up on Friday. Bob Hansen, the owner of Funway, who is extremely excited and looking forward to jumping in and brings a lot of experience in working with the community and we are very excited to have him on our board now as well. Um, another thing that our partnership campaign has kicked off 2014, uh, incredibly strong, probably more than we even expected. Um, so that being said, anybody who wants to also continue and add to that partnership and uh, become a part of Main Street, we welcome you. And the, uh, as long as supplies last, the next partners also get a Main Street rocks glass to go along with that. So um, please uh, contact the Main Street office if you are looking in, to get involved as a Main Street partner. Um, along with getting involved, we have several meetings coming up as well. Um, the annual cocktails in the... <laughs> In the park, uh, planning meeting is kicking off now on uh, tomorrow, January 22nd. Um, we also have our economic restructuring uh, committee meeting, which is next Tuesday, January 28th, as well as our um, housewalk uh, meeting, which is also on the 28th. For those of you who are interested in history, architecture, and design, and being involved with that wonderful event, um, so. Obviously, one of the things that uh, makes Main Street so successful are the people who get involved and anybody looking to get involved, please feel free to contact the Main Street office um, at 630-761-3528 or obviously go to our website, which is uh, www.downtownbatavia.com. So uh, what I really want to do now is just touch on uh, a brief review of 2013 as well as our uh, outlook for uh, 2014 is coming up. Um, I've uh, talked to the council before a few times on uh, you know why Batavia Main Street. Um, you know there was a city survey done that, and most of the the large majority of the citizens of Batavia, one of their focuses was a you know revitalized and a vibrant downtown. Uh, Main Street was originally um, founded along that purpose of making that goal, you know, making those a, a reality there. So um, when we sit down at our annual retreat every year and we start looking and we evaluate our work plans from the year before and look at what we're going to do going forward, um, we always direct ourselves towards our vision and our mission and make sure that everything that we do is hitting along those lines. So um, we sit down, we read our vision, we read our mission and go through um, all the existing work plans. You know, our vision, uh, you know, I'll read it out here, our vision is to help create a unique and vital downtown that enriches the business community, embraces history, celebrates the arts, preserves our natural environment, and provo promotes quality events to instill a sense of place in our community. Um, one of the things we added last year to that was enriching the business community. It was something we'd always done, but we really wanted to make sure that we were putting that in the forefront of uh, our focus as well. 
the mission of Batavia Main Street. The program is a not-for-profit community-based organization devoted to enhancing downtown Batavia's identity as the heart of the community through dedicated volunteer efforts. Um, I heard someone say when we were talking uh, not too long ago, uh, a couple days ago, that uh, Main Street has amassed an army of volunteers. Uh, and I really think that that speaks loud to what we have accomplished over the last few years, that um, we have so many people from this community, business owners, property owners, elected officials, uh, and citizens of this town that are looking to get involved and become part of that army right now. And we love seeing that continue through 2014. Uh, our proposed budget, um, one of the things I mentioned here uh, was the partnership program, which we are already exceeding what we're expecting to there, which really, again, I love to show that we are getting the buy-in from the community that what Main Street is doing is important to this community and continuing to grow our events and meet what it is that our community wants. That's our leadership. I'll skip right over that because nobody really cares who we are. It's more about what we do. Um, our four different committees, design, organization, promotion, and economic restructuring, all with different focuses, but what's unique about that is when you bring them together, um, they do work as a whole. So for both 2013 and 2014, we had 26 <coughs> separate action plans. Uh, another conversation I had with, um, actually I believe we had this with Bob Hanson when we were talking about him coming onto the board, was how we go about what we decide to keep, what we decide to grow. Um, that picture of the sticky notes here, I think, speaks uh, is a uh, great example of, we put up all of our work plans up on a board at our, at our retreat. We go through and we say, what worked, what didn't work, what meets, what meets our mission and vision, what doesn't, and we take the things that didn't and we throw them out. We take the things that did and we say, how can we make these better? And that's what we use to create our work plans for the next year going forward. Uh, so those 26 action, plan, action plans for uh, 2014 are going to incorporate 40 separate events throughout the year in downtown uh, that last year brought over 50,000 people to downtown Batavia. So some of our successes from last year, uh, Steve, that's a great picture of you, by the way. Um, <laughs> I think it cost me 15 bucks, but I did finally get hit you with a pie at some point. Um, money well spent. But uh, the block party last year um, absolutely exceeded our expectations. One of the unique uh, things here is that we were, for one of the first times, able to incorporate both sides of the city with River Street, the Peg Bond Center, the Riverwalk area, um, and brought just over 4,000 people to this event downtown. And it really became an entire downtown community event. The Batavia Farmer's Market, we moved from Water Street to River Street, which allowed for many more venues or vendors. It also brought a lot larger participation from the local downtown businesses, and they were able to see a lot of success, not only from just sales, but exposure from themselves as well. And the Artisan Collective, which was a new plan that brought in last year that was able to bring local home-based businesses give them a place to sell their items, give Batavians a place to shop, and also highlight available spaces and local businesses downtown. And 2013, obviously, with the help of uh, the city of Batavia and other organizations, um, you know, the economic impact was we saw 18 new business open, uh, seven businesses retained, which brought over 41,000 square feet of space off the market, and 135 new jobs brought to downtown Batavia. So 2014, uh, we have uh, some big things that we are looking, some things that we're excited about here. Um, one thing that, one work plan that is now really starting to take shape is uh, Project Mosaic. Um, we're in the final um, planning stages of a location on this. What this is, is a um, business incubator shared office space um, that will bring small businesses, home-based businesses, uh, independent contractors and give them a place to work together, um, a place that they can share, copy, conference room facilities, um, and give them a, a, almost a sense of a, uh, um, you know, an environment that they can continue to grow 
and work in. So this is one thing that, um, again, we're in the final planning stages on a location for this, and we expect to be able to give more information about that in the near future. Uh, the banner program, I believe it was last council meeting that you saw the uh, winners from the high school um, be presented. We're really excited about, uh, about being able to incorporate um, the students in with this as well. Um, I believe there are still a couple banners available for sale, so anybody who would like to purchase a banner as a family, a business, um, please contact the Main Street office there. And uh, probably one of the biggest things also um, that we're extremely excited about is the fact that Batavia Main Street has now um, become the head of Art Near Eye. Um, this came through a lot of uh, extensive meetings and planning with the Art Near Eye, former Art Near Eye committee, which we can not be more thankful for the, really the framework that they have put together for such a wonderful festival. And we are extremely excited to be able to take this and continue to grow it and um, make it an even better festival for downtown. I mentioned before the army of volunteers that comes from our community, the Citizens of Batavia, the other organizations in downtown, um, businesses, property owners, um, not, nothing that we do, um, you know, could be done without them. I mean, 2013 alone, 2,100 volunteers who donated 3,700 hours of their time towards Batavia Main Street. Uh, so that's that army of volunteers that I talk about. And when I look at our committee meetings and I get the reports every, uh, every board meeting, it's, it is pretty amazing to see the buy-in that the citizens of Batavia, the business owners really give to this community and uh, you know, they deserve a huge round of applause because um, without that, Main Street would not nearly be as successful as we are. Um, which brings us to how we end up winning our awards 2012 and 2013. Two years in a row, we've taken three out of the four um, awards at the Illinois Main Street Conference. Um, hopefully we can continue to do that in 2014. Uh, set out of 50 different Main Street communities, uh, I think it's worth noting that we have uh, Batavia has taken three or four each year there. And again, um, just a, you know, a huge thank you from two, for 2013 for the support that we got from the city, from our property owners, from our businesses, from the community overall, because that is who make, what makes Batavia Main Street tick and allows us to continue to grow and keep expanding. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Hageman? Thank you, Kurt. Well, thank you. Okay, moving then to item number nine, which is a presentation by the Batavia Access Toy Committee, Mr. Bailey. And Noel's going to set up the photo work here for us real quick. Mr. Bailey and Mr. Dubas. mayor and council I almost didn't come up here tonight because the mayor didn't call me by my regular name I told you my name is Meldred Bailey son <laughs> <laughs> I'm still representing that tonight uh, we had a great year this year with the toy drive uh, when I have Rudy tell you a little bit about uh, what we did I'm going to show a few pictures and give some thanks to the people here at Batavia. So, Rudy? We had a lot of, uh, of people help us, help us out this year, and we want to especially thank uh, a lot of different groups. Uh, we want to thank Aldi Corporation, because without their help, uh, we would have had major problems. Um, K. Hollis Jewelers, Eagle Concrete, um, Mayor Schelke and the Batavia City Council, the Batavia Police Department, the Batavia Fire Department, the Batavia Library, Batavia Park District, the Batavia Moose, Batavia Mothers Club, 
the Batavia Youth Baseball, Coach Dennis Piron and the 2013 Class 6A Football State Champion Battling Bulldogs. <laughs> Had to get that in there. Coach Matt Holm and the varsity and sophomore baseball teams, Micah Coffey and the Batavia Student Athletic Board, uh, the Batavia Public Schools students and faculty from H.C. Storm, Alice Gustafson, Louise White, J.B. Nelson, Hoover Wood, and the Rotolo Middle School. We'd also like to thank Curves. And let's see, we have the Geneva High School National English Honor Society. They came out and helped us clean toys. Uh, Geneva High School, Janet Meeks and the on-the-job training students. Uh, Kevin and all the city workers from Batavia that helped us out. Flynn Scientific, the American Business Women's Association, Jeanette and Lucy from the Mayor's Office, the Batavia Woodworkers Club, the Geneva High School Speech Team, Diane Anderson of Baird and Warner, Holy Cross Catholic Church, Five Star Learning Ranch, excuse me, um, Mike and Dottie Fletcher, Dottie uh, helped us out this year. She put on the uh, comedy show. Uh, a few people were there. Um, Mark and Wendy Lee, Elizabeth and Steve Bailey, Janet Dieter, Bob Hansen, Tom and Debbie Conan, Brittany and A.J. Cole. And we'd like to thank, I'd like to thank um, Roy's wife, Jeannie, um, who uh, helped out a lot. She's one of the co-chairmen. And I'd like to also thank my wife, uh, who did a lot of work also. She is the backbone of the organization, both her and Jeannie. And uh, last but not least, all of the people of Batavia who either helped out or donated to the Batavia Access Toy Drive this year, we couldn't have done had a, a successful year without all of your help. And uh, the children of Batavia, thank you. Roy? This was a great year. Uh, this year we had 185 families here in Batavia that we took care of. And Mayor, whether you know it or not, some of the other communities called me this year. And they says, uh, Mr. Bailey, uh, tell me how you do this. I said, well, it's pretty easy. They said, well, how many people do you have on your committee? I kind of laughed about that a minute. So I was listening on the phone. I says, man, you just heard Rudy of all the people that's kind of being part of our committee. And I says, well, there's probably eight or nine of us on the committee. They go, well, how do you do it with eight or nine people? I said, well, really, that's eight or nine people, but it's really 26,045. They said, 26,045 people? How do you do that? I said, we're all Batavia. Once a Batavian, always a Batavian. And Batavia people take care of Batavia people. And that's what it's all about. This year, with 185 families, a little over 600 children we took care of this year. And it was because not of a committee and not about all of the people that gave checks or toys or whatever. It's from the small child with their family coming in with a toy to the fire department and dropping it off. It was the lady who gave $5 because that's all she could give to make sure somebody had a happy Christmas. This is what Batavia is all about. There's no other community in the Fox Valley that does this. I don't know of how many other communities, even in the state of Illinois, that are still able to do this. Proud to be a Batavian, proud to be part of Batavia, and part of, the, of being a citizen here. And what the citizens do here in Batavia, they really step up in time of need. The people that you see on the screen here are the, are the people that the Mother's Club, the baseball team, and whatever not, that showed up on that day to make this a successful uh, a day. If you can look at that room, that room is full of toys. We looked at that room uh, on Wednesday. We, we didn't know if we were gonna make it or not, 
but you can see how full that room is. Here's another room. Looks like we took care of everybody. I mean, nobody left there uh, with, with not being taken care of and their family being having a very happy Christmas. Here's another shot of books and, 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 and games and whatever or not that was in that room. Stuffed animals, as you can see, here's another room that, that's full. It was four, four complete rooms of toys that were provided by the people here in Batavia. So with that, this year, as I said, we had about 185 families. This year, the ages changed. We never know what the ages are going to be. Last year, it was infant to six or seven years of age. This year, the ages flipped on us. It was 11 to 16. And I can remember Alderman Brown saying in one year, there's a 15-year-old boy here, Mr. Bailey. Are you going to give him a Barbie doll? I go, uh, I don't think so. But the community stepped up this year, and they gave gift cards. They gave checks and donations. And we were able to take care of over 205 teens this year that no one, you know, was left alone. So again, Batavia, thanks for all of your offerings. Thanks for making another Christmas a success here in Batavia. I'm glad to be a Batavian. So thank you very much. Any questions? Well, certainly on behalf of the community, we want to thank personally Roy and Rudy and their wives for uh, what they helped uh, put onto the plates and under the Christmas trees of so many pe people in Batavia. The fact that we serviced over 600 children, I think, speaks wonders about the magic of Christmas in our town and what it really, truly can mean. And again, these are some folks that perform some really magical things that make Batavia a very special place. So I, I guess on behalf of the community, I thank, say thank you to each and every one of you for what I'm sure turns out to be countless hours of dedication and commitment on your part to make this all come together and work. And uh, it truly is something unique and wonderful in Batavia that speaks some very high praise about our town and what we're all about. So thank you for making Batavia such a special place for so many people to live and be uh, received and welcomed in the way that they are. So thank you for all you do to make that happen. Thank you very much. Okay, moving then to item number 10, which is resolution 14-07-R, the Wilson Street Streetscape Project. And who's got this one, Alderman Brown? Thank you, Your Honor. What we have in front of us here is Resolution 14-07-R, authorizing execution of a supplement to the construction engineering agreement for the Wilson Street Streetscape and Traffic Signal Modernization and Interconnect Project. Uh, it's basically, it goes from Batavia Avenue to Island and Shumway Avenue, and this resolution is for Willis Burke Kelly and Associates. Um, this was discussed at the last JCAL meeting. We did have some discussion on it with Karen Young. No wasn't um, able to make that meeting. He is here tonight. If anybody has any questions that we can't answer here. Um, back in May, the City Council at that time um, approved some extra work to happen at nighttime. It was discovered that with, with engineering talking with the contractors and, and staff all talking in general, that to try to accomplish the work that needed to be accomplished, the underground work, which included rock excavation, to try to do that during the day just would have been way too disruptive to the traffic and, and um, it, just, it just wouldn't have worked out very well. So the decision was made by the City Council per staff's recommendation to have the contractor do the underground work at night. It worked out very well um, as far as traffic circulation and all. Um, the only problem was that they did run into, which they would have run into what, even if it was done during the day, they did run into a lot of extra rock. Um, so there was a lot of extra time spent due to the rock excavation when they were doing the underground utilities. Uh, staff and Willis Burke discussed this at the time that it was happening. They discussed how much longer time was taking, you know, for the work. Uh, Willis Burke 
thought that maybe they might have enough in their contract where they could absorb this, but they were keeping track of it along with the staff at the time. And as the project proceeded, they could see that there just wasn't going to be enough time allotted in their contract. So they did keep track of it, and staff kept track of it with them. And so consequently, they did come back to us. The project is not yet complete, so there is still going to be some review work that has to be done. And they did come to us with the request for a change order. Um, they figure it's going to cost $56,147. It's all itemized out here how and why. Uh, a lot of the work is going to be done to keep the cost down um, by staff. So this change order supplement is for or this supplement to the contract, rather not a change order, is, is a request for $47,949.53. I just want to mention that staff did work with Willis Burke, and Willis Burke has been a very good contractor to work with in this regard that they did take any profit out of this supplement. Um, they are entitled to their overhead, but they have taken the profit out of it in order to keep working with the city in best effort. So um, JCAL did make recommendation to the City Council for approval, so I move for approval of Resolution 14-07-R. Second. Move by Alderman Brown, second by Alderman Starks for the approval of Resolution 14-07-R. The uh, most Burke Kelsey uh, three contract supplement. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? No. Sparks? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Sam? Aye. Vasilian? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Motion to approve 12 yes, two no's, none absent. Okay, moving to item 14, which is Ordinance 14-08, TIF Redevelopment Agreement with Galantano of Batavia. Alderman Brown, do you have this one? I do, Your Honor. I'm um, very pleased to present this. This was also at the last J it was at the JCAL meeting a week ago. Uh, Chris Aniston uh, presented it to us. He is here tonight also. Uh, the owners of Gatano were here earlier tonight. We did call a special, special JCAL meeting for tonight at 6.30. In the matter of a week or so, staff got together with the attorneys and with the um, Gatano owners, it's Di Bernardo, I believe it's the last name, and worked up the agreement and um, wanted to present that to the JCAL tonight at 6.30 for JCAL's approval and recommendation to City Council. So we did meet tonight at 6.30 on this. Uh, the agreement, everybody's got it, but what it is is, is a $25,000 grant and a $75,000 loan. All the money's coming out of TIF. It's a six-year loan that's going to be paid back at 2.75% over six years. Um, the work is, it's, all the work is going to be in excess of $220,000. And I guess I should mention this is for a restaurant to be located at the northwest corner of River Street and Wilson Street in that building there. Um, they're going to do quite an extensive amount of kitchen work. They're going to convert the basement into an area where they can provide for dining there. Uh, they're going to have tables and such upstairs and a, and a counter where, where their, their guests can sit at the counter and, and watch them cook. It's a very specialty type Italian restaurant. They have another restaurant in business right now. And um, staff, or staff did, as I say, uh, Mr. Uh, Aniston did present this to us. Jay Cow did discuss it. Uh, very pleased to see it come, and I do want to mention that, at, that Chris did mention tonight in the JCAL meeting that in a matter of 48 hours, they were able to pull through his um, spearheading, I guess I could say, pull Scott's department together, the fire department, Jeff's department, and everybody together to get with the contractors and the owners and review everything and, and get this project moving along. So in a matter of a week, the, the documents have been written up and, and finalized. They've had their meeting with the contractors, and the project's ready to move ahead pending this agreement being passed tonight. Um, I just want to say, too, that at, at, at the JCAL meeting, the owners were very complimentary of the River Street project, and that's one of the main reasons why they chose to locate here in Batavia, because they are very excited about the commitment that the past and the present City Council have got for the revitalization of the downtown, the streetscape programs, 
Um, what we did on River Street and what they see happening through the rest of the town is, is uh, what is bringing the excitement of these new businesses coming to town. So I certainly would encourage everyone to support this project. It's certainly um, another sign of the revitalization of this downtown that we're also committed to do. So I move for approval of, I guess I need to pull it out here, Ordinance 14-08, the TIF redevelopment agreement with Catano's Patavia. Second. Second. Move by Alderman Brown, second by Alderman Wolf for the approval of ordinance. Was it Wolf or was it Sparks? Wolf. Uh, for the approval of Ordinance 14-08, the TIF redevelopment agreement with Cantanos and downtown Batavia. Any discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Aye. Wolf? Aye. Sparks? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Homan? Aye. Sam? Aye. Facilian? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Ordinance 14-08 is approved 14 yes, no no's, none absent. There is no, no item number 12 because the administrator's home with a back problem. So we're moving to 13 committee reports. Uh, community development, Alderman Brown. Thank you, Your Honor. Meetings to announce. Uh, plan commission is scheduled for Wednesday, January 22nd at 7.30. Historic preservation is scheduled for Monday, January 27th at 5.30. Uh, JCOW is scheduled, the next JCOW is scheduled for January 28th at 7.30. A few items for CDC on there. Annexation of certain properties. Uh, we've all been getting memos on that that Scott's been working on. Comprehensive plan update. There'll be some more discussion on future and present streetscape. And then the next item that's uh, going to be coming to us regarding grants and loans is for the Aliano's restaurant. And that's all I have for meetings to announce, Your Honor. I did want to mention that along with the uh, Gatano's uh, ordinance that just got passed tonight, one of the things I wanted to mention that maybe, Your Honor, with your help, we could get, um, get some publicity on this and get the Altamano group in here. Um, during December, the Altamano group, which was the designer for River Street and all the other projects that we have been doing in town here so far, put in an application to a group called the Congress for New Urbanism. And this is an organization that's made up by landscape architects, urban designers, architects, and planners. And they entered River Street in this, I guess it's a, a yearly thing that they do for um, all cities can enter and, and designers can enter uh, projects that they do throughout the state for awards. And Batavia River Street was awarded the best street award. Um, I can make sure you all get the email if you haven't gotten it. Maybe, like I say, we can get Altamano to come in here and talk about it a little bit. But there's a very extensive thing that they go through in order to apply for this. It's some of the things I'll share with you. It's shared use, link to surroundings, safety and security, automobile and pedestrians, encourage walking and community cohesion, design based on local conditions, and it goes on and on and on. So this, this group, they meet and they, they uh, review all the different streets that are being presented to them and pick the ones that they think are the winners. And Patavia won the best street award for the state of Illinois. So I think that speaks again very highly of what the past and present city councils are doing for the downtown of Patavia. So I just want to bring that to everybody's attention and I hope we can get them in here because it is a very distinctive award that I think we should all be very proud of. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Public Utilities, Alderman Clark. Uh, looking at the committee schedule, I do not see anything regarding public utilities for the sec next several meetings, so uh, that could always change, but right now nothing um, with regards to public utilities. Thank you. Thank you. City Services, Alderman Wolf. I believe on the JCOW meeting for January 28th, we have uh, the Mahoney Creek project and engineering inspection fees will be on that JCOW meeting. That's all. Government Services, Alderman Sparks. Thank you. Uh, we have two items on the JCOW January 20th meeting. One is the prevailing wage ordinance, and the other one is the Gaetano's liquor license. That's all we have. Thank you. Do we need item number uh, 14, other business? Do we have other business from members of the City Council this evening? 
Okay, moving to item number 15, uh, the mayor's report. Uh, I would just call your attention that on uh, Friday afternoon, the 31st, uh, the Batavia Chamber of Commerce is going to have their annual Citizen of the Year uh, Oli uh, Awards uh, reception. It's going to be this year up at the Homestead on North Batavia Avenue, and the recipient of this year's Citizen of the Year Award is uh, former Alderman uh, Jim Hansen, and he was receiving this for a number of things he's done in the community, but uh, during his term on ter four terms on the City Council, Alderman Hansen was very instrumental in kind of helping to commence the downtown redevelopment program in Batavia that <coughs> excuse me, started in the early 1960s under uh, Mayor Swanson and then was later uh, carried forth by uh, Mayor Robert Brown. And uh, they really, I think, uh, set the stage for a lot of what we are doing here today because specifically they they led the, the had the vision to to acquire or or negotiate the control over a number of land you parcels of land in downtown Batavia, much of which made up the original redevelopment and kind of got the momentum going for other things to occur. So uh, I've been asked to speak at that on that occasion about Jim and his service, but I just wanted tonight to call your attention and, and encourage as many members of the council who can make it to attend. This is always a a nice thing to uh, attend in, in recognition of the community and the, the services that we've had. So that is just a, a great thing that's happening. Uh, other than that, I don't really want to get into a lot of other things because we've got into JCAL and we've, we're having a lot of conversations on specifically new development ideas or new development projects. And I would just make the observation that, you know, going back to about 2006, 2007, we had a, Batavia and everybody else had a massive slowdown of all of a sudden we were building in the early years of the last decade to three, four hundred houses a year and that goes back into the 90s and then all of a sudden 2006 started arriving and we went down to three houses a year or maybe no houses almost. It was almost a, we've been in kind of an eight year low here but suddenly now the, the community development department and uh, the city staff is uh, having conversations with a number of people who seemingly want to talk about building something on almost every vacant piece of ground around Batavia that I know still exists. So I, I have a feeling that specifically at the utilities and at the CDC and city services, uh, there's going to be a lot of conversations going on in those committees the remainder of this coming year about new development prospects and projects in our town, uh, the likes of which we haven't seen in many years. So uh, the real estate market seems to have come alive and there certainly are a number of people that are wanting to do something in Batavia and certainly success stories like we honored here earlier tonight with the high school winning the state championship in football really helps to put a, a sale uh, idea on people that want to get into Batavia to be part of you know good things like that. So uh, a lot of positive momentum is, is arising and moving forward here is we begin the year 2014. So I just wanted to call your attention that I think this is going to be a very busy year. And I thank each and every one of you for your, edu your, your dedication and your commitment to come down here and step forward and help out because uh, this is going to be a very demanding and a very, uh, I think, enabling time in the history of our town and something that is going to allow us to be partner in some very key decisions uh, for the future of this town for generations to come. So it's kind of an exciting time to be here, and I thank each and every one of you for your services. So that being said, uh, no, no executive session, no resolution. Those have been postponed. Alderman Brown, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn the city council meeting. Second. Moved by Alderman Brown, second by Alderman O'Brien. Clerk, take a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A